Imagine working a job where you got to do whatever work you wanted to do, but your, your boss won't tell you how much he's gonna pay you for that work. So you're gonna go do the work, you're gonna work really, really hard, and then you're gonna turn to your boss and you're gonna say, uh, how, how much will you pay me for that? That's what it's like to be a YouTuber. Today we are gonna dive into the analytics and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how much money I made on a two million view video and the, the shocking difference between how much money I made on a one million view video. So those two things you would think would just be double, but but they're they're not at all. And I know a ton of people are are just interested in how much YouTubers make on the platform or how much they make from something like a 1 million or 2 million view video, but I also know there's a ton of people following this channel specifically that are looking to grow their own YouTube channel. So my idea is that if I, if I show you this, if I'm just super transparent about how it works or explain how it works, it'll help you to make the most out of this. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you three tricks of the trade to, to make the most out of all of this, to make the most out of the, the ad money that comes from YouTube. And this won't be one of those how much money I made in 2020 on YouTube type of videos. I actually don't think that sharing that data helps explain this concept very clearly. I think it actually kind of muddies the waters on it. But of note, if you are a YouTuber or you're, you're growing a channel, realize that, that this, the ad sent part of it where you're getting paid from Google because of the ads is is only part of how you should be making your money you, you should diversify so that this is is maybe 45 to 50 percent of your total income if not even less because of note you can go down in the links on this description and click any of those Amazon links that helps me make money you can click the first link in the description for epidemic sound sign up for a free trial of the best music on the internet that also helps me out a ton you can go to the second link in the description and you can buy some of my merch or uh our be a good human merch that helps me out a ton or you can even go to the third link in the description and you could you could pick up yourself a pair of blenders sunglasses which is just the sunglasses that i wear when we make a lot of these videos and so many people ask me about them that i partnered with blenders and now i make a small cut when you guys buy sunglasses so lots of ways to make money on youtube and because of the, the unpredictability, we'll say, of AdSense, you need those other revenue streams that are set up, that are flowing, that are consistent to know I'm gonna pay my rent this month. But today again, we're gonna focus on the AdSense. We're gonna look at two videos, why one made such a, a shocking amount and the other one just kind of did meh. The, the first thing to really look at or to understand is, is how YouTube pays its creators or, or what is it paying its creators for, and that's ads. On most videos, there's an ad before the video, there's a, a mid-roll ad or maybe two mid-roll ads sometimes, and then an ad at the end of the video. Google is charging advertisers to put those ads there, and then YouTube gives a creator a cut of that revenue. And to understand how all of that works, we need to understand two important terms, CPM and RPM. CPM stands for cost per mile, and RPM stands for revenue per mile. And in this case, mile means 1,000 views. And since Google is charging advertisers to place an ad on my channel, CPM represents how much an advertiser is paying or, or the cost for the advertiser to put an ad on my channel and get 1,000 views. So, so for 1,000 people to see an ad, that's the CPM. Now, RPM is how much I'm actually making from that thousand. So the CPM and the RPM are two very different numbers. Because the CPM is, is how much Google's charging, but then Google takes 50%, and then there's a bunch of views that, that can't be monetized for all sorts of different reasons. So that number CPM doesn't look like RPM, which is what I make. It's usually a little over double. So it's easy. Google just tells me what my CPM and RPM are. I can look at them and I can just start making videos based on on that, right? Not at all. CPM and RPM are actually constantly changing and for a number of factors. Think of it like this, Google is auctioning off ad space on my channel. So based on what the topic of my channel is, based on the people that are watching my channel, their age, how much money they make, where they live, all those kinds of factors are constantly changing how much an advertiser will pay for a thousand views on a specific video of mine. So for instance, if I was to make a, a super fun family vlog where we just kind of went out and adventured around San Diego with Morgan and Eleanor, 
I wouldn't get paid nearly the same CPM or RPM as a, a video where I sit down and I talk about personal finance or something based in money. So the topics of your videos really matter because that's gonna determine which advertisers want to put their ad on your channel. Things like personal finance, which is, which is I think the highest tier bracket in YouTube. I think they make the highest CPM. Sometimes you'll see 20 or 30 or $40 CPM. So companies are willing to pay $40 to put an ad on a channel that's for a thousand views. So $40 every thousand views. Ah, uh, that can really add up. But that's the thing is that it's not like one channel just gets a CPM and an RPM. It changes based on each video, each individual video. And then even within the video, let's say 100,000 views come in, but 30,000 of them were from USA, 40,000 of them were from Canada, 20,000 of them were from the UK, and the rest were just kind of scattered around the world all of those views will actually be paid differently based on the different locations and how much Google can charge advertisers within those locations to put the ad on my channel. So the CPMs and RPMs that I'm looking at are actually averages within that single video based on what Google was able to charge different advertisers. And I have no control over that auction process. Google just goes out and finds advertisers and plops them on my videos. All I can say is whether I want videos at the beginning end or the middle. I can say whether they're, they're pop-up videos, those, those like bar ones that pop up here. So I can say what kind of videos and then Google fills those spots and then just tells me what my CPM and RPM are later. Again, a boss where the boss just tells you, go, go work and I'll tell you how much you're getting paid later. But again, there are some strategies for, for upping those CPM and RPM numbers and we will get to those at the end of this video. But another question I get a lot is, do subscribers matter? Be, because your sub count went up last year, does that mean that you make more money on your videos now? And the answer is uh, no, not at all. On YouTube, you, you don't get paid for how many subscribers you have. The value in a subscriber base is that hopefully those people have rung the bell. If you haven't, by the way, go down, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell so you get notified, and then you can watch my videos when I put them out. And and that's the value. The value is I have a lot of people that might or, or are more likely to see my video in their feed because they've subscribed to this channel. If you've rung the bell, it will pop up in your feed for sure. You might even get notified that I made a new video, but that's where the subscriber base, the, the value in a sub base is. It's a community of people that when you make a video, they're more likely to watch it because they're following you because they're subscribed to your channel. So if you do really like a channel, make sure to ring the bell. It helps that creator a ton because then you're more likely to view his or her video and, and that's, that's what helps them out, is viewing videos. So don't just subscribe to people, watch their stuff. Watch my stuff, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so we now know that CPM is how much the advertiser is paying for a thousand views on a video. And RPM is how much the creator is actually making on those thousand views on a video. And we know that subscribers don't change how much someone's getting paid. Those subscribers actually have to watch the creator's videos for the creator to get paid. They're, they're paid on views, not on subscribers. So then the reason that a, a two million view video on my channel did did so much better than a 1 million view video, it's gotta be because of CPM and RPM? Absolutely. The CPM for the GoPro accessories video at 1.1 million views was $5.57. So advertisers were willing to pay $5.57 for every thousand views on that video. But my RPM, how much money I was actually making on that video was only $2.22. So if you do all that math, $2.22 times 1.1 million, you, you get $2,524.48. So by that math, a video that has 2.3 million views should be five, six thousand dollars? Nope. For that video, YouTube paid me $18,366.82. I know, from one video. It's mind blowing, but it's because the CPM on that video was $13.43 and the RPM was $7.87. So on the GoPro video, I was making $2.22 per thousand views. And on the beginner photography video, I was making $7.87 per the same thousand views. So when you look at them, this is making almost four times as much per thousand views and it did 
double the views. So one video made $2,500 and the other one made $18,000. But that's two videos in a similar genre, GoPro and photography. I really didn't change up the topics much. So, so why the huge difference in RPM, $2.22 versus $7.87? And in this case, ah, I don't know. The demographics on the two videos are, are actually quite similar. The geolocations or where people were watching from the two videos, almost identical. The main difference demographically was that on the GoPro video, more men were watching the video than women. And on the beginner photography video, more women were watching the video than men. But I do have two educated guesses why the RPMs were so different. And the first one is that they, they went viral at different times. The GoPro video went viral in 2019. It, it hung in there quite low for a while and then it took off and hit that million pretty early. And the photography video went viral this year. It, it sat on the channel for an entire year. After one year, the beginner photography video, the video that they've now paid me $18,000 for, sat on my channel with 7,400 views after one full year. Then in April, just after the whole shutdown happened, everyone went on YouTube. Everyone was looking to learn photography. They were looking to learn new skill. They found my video. YouTube said, hey, here's one that's been sitting on the shelf for a year, shot it up. And in, in basically the last eight months, it went from 7,400 views to 2.3 million views. And because so many people were on their computers this year, the CPMs this year have actually been a little bit higher than in 2019. So this was a really high demand year. Tons of eyeballs were on YouTube because of the lockdown. Everyone was at home on their phones on YouTube. So the CPM was actually a little bit higher just based on the time I mean that one video went viral versus the other video going viral. And the other main difference was that the GoPro video didn't actually have any mid-roll ads until it hit about 500,000 views. That's when somehow the mid-rolls like popped up and I realized like, oh geez, there should be ads in this video. And then, and then I did. So, so only half of those views actually had that mid-roll in there and, and were potentially making me more money. But all of this is to, to really circle back to the fact that as YouTube creators, we don't know what they're gonna pay us. We don't know what our CPM is going to be. We don't know what our RPM is gonna be. We're just throwing content into the algorithm and hoping hoping that we do well in those two metrics, which is like doing the work that you want to do, going to your boss and then saying, ah, oh, I did all that work. I, it's already done. I've already delivered the work. How much would you like to pay me for that? <laughs> But to wrap this all up, I am gonna give you guys three tips or three strategies that will make your CPM and RPM a bit higher. Call them, call them tricks of the trade. And, and number one is to make videos about money. Thing is, uh, money is one of the largest viewed categories on YouTube and it's, it's for sure the highest paying category on YouTube. If you're talking about money, you're talking about personal finance, even within whatever niche you've kinda honed for yourself, Talk about money, but within that niche and, and you'll do well. Maybe you make a whole video about making money doing the thing that you do on YouTube. Number two is, is having the right ads selected, specifically mid-roll ads. Now on YouTube, if your video is longer than eight minutes, you can have mid-roll ads. And I know it's, it's this kind of balance of, you don't wanna bug your audience with ads, but you also wanna support your channel and be able to make the money that you should be getting paid for the work you're doing. And I think as viewers, I think we all kind of realize it's this necessary evil. When I'm watching YouTube and I, I get an ad, I go, oh, okay. I understand. I have been watching this ad for free this whole time. So as a viewer, you're kind of paying for the content by watching an ad in the middle of the video. And number three, and I think probably the hardest part of YouTube is providing super solid, super engaging content that gets your audience to watch all the way to the end. That lets YouTube know a bunch of stuff, mainly that people are interested in your video, they want to watch it, and they're gonna watch a lot of it. And yes, it is the hardest part of YouTube, but maybe, maybe you, uh, Think of three tips for people to make more money on YouTube and then you put them right at the end of your video. Maybe, maybe that'll do the trick. And with that, thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. You guys that, that watch these videos all the way through, you really are, you really are the biggest supporters of this channel. It is, it is so cool that you do that and I appreciate it so, so much. Hopefully this helped. 
hopefully this helped you understand the analytics stuff. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Yeah.